Okay, so this is going to be a simple Bitcoin transaction. All right, so Alice wants to buy a cup of coffee from Bob using Bitcoin. All right, so the first thing that's going to happen is Bob is going to, or his wallet software is going to create a QR code. And in that QR code, there's going to be two important uh, fields, right? So there's going to be there's going to be an address that's encoded. That's where he wants the Bitcoin sent. And there's going to be an amount specified, the amount of Bitcoin that he wants, right? So let's say that he's charging 0.1 Bitcoin for this uh, cup of coffee, which would be an expensive cup of coffee. But just to keep the numbers simple, we'll say 0.1. So he's going to make this QR code, or his wallet software is going to make this QR code. Alice is going to scan it with her wallet software, and it will start creating a transaction. And there's two important parts to this transaction. There's there's inputs, and there are outputs. Right. So the the inputs are is the Bitcoin that is going to be spent, and it references something called an unspent transaction, which is also abbreviated as UTXO. And the outputs uh, they're gonna they're gonna specify a recipient for this Bitcoin. And it's also going to specify an amount, the amount of Bitcoin that is being spent. And uh, well, actually, once this once this transaction is included in the blockchain, the outputs will then become unspent transactions and will be can be used as inputs for transactions down the line, right? So when this when someone wants to spend the output, it will become an input. If that makes sense but we can we can get a little bit deeper into this transaction right so let's say that um, Alice has one Bitcoin in her wallet and she's going to use this one Bitcoin as the input for this transaction and there's going to be two outputs actually so there's going to be uh, first Bob is going to receive his point one for his cup of coffee and there's also going to be a second output which is going to be 0.8 BTC, which is going to be Alice's change, right? Because since she's spending one Bitcoin, she expects to have some some change come back to her. And you'll, you you might notice that we're actually missing uh, 0.1 Bitcoin. That that difference between the inputs and outputs is actually given, or it is implicitly given to a miner. It's it sort of incentivizes. The, the miner to include this transaction in their block. It, it's a it's a transaction fee that'll be given if a miner includes it in their in their winning block, right? So that that's why there is a difference between the inputs and outputs here. All right. So once this transaction has been created by Alice's software, uh, Alice is going to sign it with her private key and verify that yes, she does want to spend this Bitcoin in this transaction. And then she will broadcast, or her software is going to broadcast that transaction out to the Bitcoin network, right? So some node is initially going to receive this transaction, and it's going to verify. It's going to it's going to run a long list of criteria against the transaction. It's going to make sure that Alice does have one Bitcoin, that she did sign it, that the syntax is correct. It's going to check a bunch of things, and if it passes those checks. It will then continue to broadcast that uh, transaction out to other nodes in the network. And they're going to do the exact same thing. The other nodes are going to do the exact same thing. They're going to make sure that, yes, this is a valid transaction. Uh, once, once that transaction has been broadcast out throughout the network, uh, each, each node is going to store the transaction in something called mempool right so each node has an instance of their own mempool and this is a collection of unconfirmed transactions right so it's transactions that have uh, that exist that would like to be included in in the blockchain but have yet to be included in a block so eventually one of these nodes is going to be a mining node and it's going to start assembling a candidate block a new block that it would like to be included in the blockchain Right, so it's going to take some of these transactions inside the mempool and start putting them inside this block. 
And we can say that one of these transactions will be the one that we just made above. So Alice's transaction is, is inside of this block. Once those transactions have been put together, uh, the software will then make a header for this block. And the header is going to contain some metadata about the block itself. Uh, one important field in this block header is the nonce, which we'll get back to in one second. But once this, once this header has been created, once the block has been created, the next step is the miner is going to run a SHA-256 uh, hashing algorithm against the block header. Right, and so the output of this of this algorithm is just a random 256 bit long output, right? So it's just a random series of zeros and ones. That's 256 bits long. And what the miner is looking for is a is a certain output that has a, a certain amount of, of leading zeros before a one is seen. Right? So basically the miner is just going to continually run this hashing algorithm against the header until it gets the output that it sees. And that's, that's sort of where this nonce comes in, because the rest of the header is static, except for the, except for the nonce, which is just a 32-bit number, or a 32-bit uh, binary field. Right? And initially, it'll just be 0. And it's gonna, it's, we're going to run the function with the header and the nonce set at 0. And we're going to check the output. We're going to see if it has the amount of zeros. If it doesn't, we increment the nonce to the next number. So we're going to increment it to 1. And we run the function against the, the block header again. And we check again, does it have the amount of leading zeros? Let's say no, it does not. We increment it to 2. OK, finally, it has the amount of leading zeros that's been specified. We can say 3. And uh, mining has been complete. This block has been mined. Right. So once that happens, the mining software is then going to broadcast this block back out to the network and say, hey, I found the next block. And other nodes in the network are going to do the same thing that they did with the transaction. They're going to verify and make sure that, yes, this is a valid block. All the transactions are legitimate. Uh, the block header is correct. The, the hash output does have the correct amount of leading zeros. If all of those things are true and valid, it's going to continue to broadcast the block out. And there will be a new header block that was just created that includes the transaction, Alice's transaction to Bob. Right, so now that this, this block that we created is the new head of the blockchain, Bob will be able to see that on his end with his Bitcoin client and verify that yes, this transaction has been included and he now has 0.1 Bitcoin more than he did before. And uh, yeah, everyone everyone's happy the transaction went through. So that is sort of a, a high-level overview of what happens when you spend a Bitcoin. Uh, some of this is probably a little too high-level to really understand what totally is going on. But uh, I, I will cover that in, in further videos, and we can dive a little bit deeper, and, and I can show what exactly in more detail is going on when you, when you spend a Bitcoin. Um, yeah, that, that's the end of this one. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.